So I have a drawing of a person here who's walking. Now, I don't know how much time we spend thinking about walking. I don't spend too much time thinking about walking. But when you try to actually think about it, a question comes to mind. How do you actually move forward? Okay. When I'm walking, I push backward on the ground, and I move forward. Okay. Now, part of you is like, well, duh, Dr. Hale, that's going to be happening. When you push backward on the ground, you move forward. That's how you walk. So let's think about that for, for a little bit in terms of Newton's second law and forces. Okay, so if I am pushing backwards, then I'm applying a force backward on the surface of the Earth. So there's a force right here in this region that's I'm pushing backward. Okay, maybe both both be at the same time. I'm pushing backward on the Earth. Well, that's a force on the Earth pushing backward on the Earth. Okay, why do I go forward? Uh, where's the force making me go forward? Okay, I don't I don't see a force there. It's, I, I agree with you that I'm pushing backwards on the Earth, but I am going forward. Okay, so there's two things to think about there. One is I'm pushing on the Earth, and so there must be a force acting on the Earth, and therefore an acceleration of the Earth. And the acceleration of the Earth would also be in that direction. Here's my two forces, and that's going to be proportional. Um, a of the Earth is going to be equal to the net force on the Earth divided by the mass of the Earth. Okay. So looking at that, I see I'm pushing back on it, so there's a force. Okay, there's a force there. Um, but why don't I see the Earth accelerate? Well, it's because of this thing right here. How, how massive is, is the Earth? Well, I might be able to push with a handful of Newtons, you know, maybe 100 Newtons of force. Okay, but guess what? The mass of the Earth is 10 to the 24th kilograms. And so 10 or 10 to the 1 uh, newtons divided by 10 to the 24th kilograms gives me 10 to the negative 23rd meters per second squared, or nothing. I don't see anything. I see no acceleration. There indeed is a force. I push back on the Earth, but it's an immeasurable acceleration because the mass of the Earth is so amazingly big. Okay. All right. Now, having established that that there there is a force on the Earth, what makes me go forward? Okay. Well, this is what the uh, main idea of action-reaction pairs that is going to build us up to Newton's third law is I indeed go forward because in the process of pushing back on the Earth, the Earth is pushing on me. Okay. The Earth is pushing on me. Now, that seems weird. I don't see the ground like heaving forward and pushing on me. But this is um, the, uh, the only way to explain this is to recognize that in pushing back on the ground, the ground is pushing forward on me. Um, and we call those action-reaction pairs. Okay, let's take a, a different example that might be a little bit clearer. Yes, here's a wall, and I uh, am leaning a ladder against this wall. Okay, so or a big tall box or something like that. I lean this uh, big tall box or this ladder against the wall. Okay, what's keeping the wall, the the ladder from falling down? Well, the walls are there, so the wall is pushing on the ladder this way. Okay, it's keeping the ladder from falling in. But what if that wall was made out of thin paper? Would it hold the ladder up? No, the ladder would push through it because the ladder is pushing on the wall. Okay? We usually don't think of that force because the wall is huge and heavy and strong and so though the force there is a force on the wall, we don't see any effect on the wall. So applying Newton's second law, we can kind of easily do that to the ladder. We can kind of easily do that to um, to to objects that are, are, are moving, but the wall we don't think of it as as, as doing much. But when you try and reduce it like I did and say, what if it's made out of paper? Well, that ladder is going to push through it because of a very real force. These two forces would be action-reaction pairs. These two forces are action-reaction pairs. Pushing back on the Earth um, makes the Earth push forward on me. 
the ladder leaning into the wall, pushing on the wall, the wall pushes backwards on the ladder. Okay, now a way of organizing this is by recognizing those interactions. And so one way is to draw a, a free di body diagram which describes a single object. So if I were to describe um, this ladder here, I can draw a dot, okay, and I would say, okay, there's a force of gravity pulling down on it, there's a normal force of the ground pushing up on it, okay, and there's um, a, a, a force um, of the, the uh, uh, wall pushing out on it, okay, and now that looks like that ladder should then accelerate, okay, so that ladder should accelerate, but what we find is there's also a frictional force here keeping it from sliding, which if it's not moving, then that should be equal magnitude. So this is the normal force of the wall on the ladder. This is the normal force of the floor on the ladder. This is the frictional force, it would be static, of the floor on the ladder. And this would be the gravitational force of the Earth. I'm going to put EE, meaning the entire Earth. We're talking about the entire Earth, not the surface of the Earth, but the entire entire Earth, okay, on the ladder. Right, now let's draw a free body diagram for the wall. Okay, so I draw one for the wall. Here's my dot representing the wall. Okay, it sure it has a, a, a mass. It's going to have a force of gravity and a normal force, it's, a, it's a, a sitting on top of the ground, so we're going to have a normal force of the uh, floor on the wall. We have a force of gravity of the entire Earth on the wall. Okay, And this ladder is pushing in on it, so I'm going to have a normal force of the ladder on the wall. And it not going anywhere, which means there must be also a frictional force here via its attachment points to the ground. Basically, you can call them a pushing force or, or a frictional force. It's just whatever's keeping the wall from sliding backwards. And that would be in the forward direction. And so we'll just call that some, you know, F contact or something like that. Some F uh, would be a contact, friction, whatever, whatever it is. But that is from um, ultimately the the, uh, the surface on the wall. So what the ground is, um, the floor or the surface. Uh, how about let me do this F to emphasize the floor since we use floor in all the other cases. Okay. So the thing that you should know with these two free body diagrams is one, they describe one object and all the forces acting on that one object, and you can see that with these subscripts, something on L something on L, something on L, something on L. This is all describing the forces acting on the ladder. Something on W, something on W, W, W. Okay, these are all the forces acting on the wall. So when I'm describing the uh, forces acting on the ladder, I need to make sure that I'm really indicating only those forces acting on the ladder. Even though the ladder is doing something else, here the ladder is acting on the wall. But that doesn't appear on here. So this process, this technique, helps to do at least one thing, and that is to help avoid the mistaken case of self-forces. I cannot push on myself to make myself go faster. I cannot apply a force to myself. Okay, so you should never have a force on a free body diagram. You can definitely push on other things, but it's only the external forces pushing on you that make you move. Okay, In this case here, I push on the earth, so that's me pushing outward. I need something to push on me, and that's this action-reaction pair of the Earth pushing on me here. So that's an example of analyzing two interacting objects, is to carefully draw their free body diagrams with subscripts to d indicate what's causing the force and what is being acted on, and ensuring that on one free body diagram, only those forces that end in the on L or on the object um, up here. Now, something that's also going to be helpful is recognizing where are action reaction pairs. For this latter case, this wall on the ladder is an action reaction pair to the ladder on the wall. 
And one way to recognize that just from this technique is to see that the subscript is simply reversed, as well as the type of force is the same. Okay? The type of force is the same. So an action-reaction pair are ones in which the type of the force is the same. I can't have a normal force be an action-reaction pair to a gravitational force or a frictional force. A normal force has to be an action-reaction pair to another normal force. Okay, and then the subscripts just switch places. Wall on the ladder, ladder on the wall. This technique will help us keep things organized as we start to have some complex um, interact interacting objects.